Hello everybody, video here for you today. This is the retro no cap recap of the Curse of Oak Island season 6 episode 20 called Short Days and Tall Nights with a K. Originally aired in April 2019. If you missed my recaps of previous and future episodes, there's a link to my Oak Island playlist in the upper right. Let's get into it. Doo 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 doo. Previously. On the Curse of Oak Island, people have been looking for an incredible treasure for 229 years. The rare shot of the episode opens the episode and is a very high shot from the southwest of the island. Past the triangle-shaped swamp and the elephant's head, you can see Frog Island on the left and Apple Island on the right. On the previous episode, we learned that the crane operators of Nova Scotia were on strike with other unions out as well in solidarity. The strike could last three weeks, which would be very close to the end of the shooting schedule. Winter is coming, so the team must decide how to best use their time left on the island this season. Rick says they will focus on the Smith's Cove excavation. Jack says if there aren't going to be more money pit spoils to hand search, he will be available to do the Smith's Cove spoils. Billy continues to excavate the structure found near the former location of the crane pad. Water continues to trickle from it, which could mean that it is related to the finger drains and connected flood tunnel that goes to the money pit area. In 1965, Robert Restall claimed he was close to finding the key to shutting off the water that caused all of the previous searcher attempts to fail. Unfortunately, he, his son Bobby Jr., and two co-workers died in a tragic accident involving noxious gas in one of many exploratory shafts they had dug in Smith's Cove. Marty thinks they have found a shaft, and it appears that is correct. Surveyor Steve Guptill will be there the next day, so they will be able to compare the location of the shaft and the GPS location the die flowed from in a test earlier this season. Gary and Jack go to Lot 1 on the western side of the island. Gary says if there are coins near big boulders over there, there's got to be coins near these big boulders. Gary passes up digging a small iron target, but sees this piece of pottery on the surface at that location. Jack says it's the same blue color they are finding in the money pit area. They use their vehicle's winch to pull this fallen tree out of the way. The area now clear for detecting, Gary gets a non-ferrous two-way repeatable signal. It ends up being a 1700s cuff button that Gary thinks is military and gilded. It's similar to this one found in the Gal 1 spoils from deep inside the money pit area on the opposite side of the island. The tide is coming in, so they end the search there for now. Author and researcher James McQuiston joins members of the team in the war room to present his theory. He would go on to start the Oak Island Plus podcast with Dr. John Hamels in 2023. He does not have a treasure location, but his research leads him to believe that not only did the Knights Templar visit Oak Island as far back as the 1300s, but they and their descendants continued to return to deposit treasure until the 1700s. His story starts out dealing. Take two. His story starts out detailing the creation of the Knights Baronet of Nova Scotia, King James the First of England, also King James the Sixth of Scotland, same person, wanted to oust the French Catholics living at Port Royal on the northern coast. He went to his friend William Alexander and asked him to send some Scotsmen. Alexander agreed, but required that there be a new Scotland, which is Nova Scotia, in addition to the already existing New England, New France, and New Spain. That led to the beginning of the Knights Baronet in 1625. 25% of the roster had connections to the Knights Templar, and the first few dozen all had those connections. 
One of the first places McQuiston thinks they went was New Ross, which is 20 miles north of Oak Island. Two years prior, the team visited a property at New Ross that has a foundation thought to be of a Scottish castle. One of the stones has a Templar cross carved into it. McQuiston also found a book that has a listing of the treasures of the Lot of Edinburgh, Mary's Chapel, that he estimated in 2018 was worth half a billion dollars. Last on the list was the collection of lands and title deeds, which were back then kept in canvas wax bags so that the India ink did not smear. In 1897, Searcher William Chapel's drill bit had this bit of paper on it with the letters VI. James believed that since the ink on it is not smeared, it would have been in a watertight bag until the drill pierced it. At 153 feet, the drill bit encountered a concrete covered wooden box. And when they pulled the bit up, gold shavings were on it. In addition to that piece of paper. Last season, the H8 spoils included this piece of parchment as well as leather book binding. The treasure list also includes gold plated buttons and other items the Lagina group has found over the years. After the meeting, Marty and Gary go to the stone well recently discovered near the money pit area after a carved stone was noticed by a visiting technician. On the new Ross property, the team investigated a well that had a flagstone floor as well as this triangle carved into one of the sidewall stones. Gary thinks the well is very old. But it has a modern cap on it that he wants to remove. Marty calls archaeologist Laird Niven and verifies that he has no problem with them doing that. Gary gets a hit inside the older part of the well, but it will have to be drained by a pump before it can be dug. The next day after it's drained, Gary climbs down inside and pulls out this oddly shaped stone, which Marty puts to the side to be examined later. Gary finds this decorated piece of lead and shortly afterwards a coin, but it's a modern dollar coin. Previous lead artifacts discovered on Oak Island are the Smith's Cove find of the lead cross on the right and the western side of the island, lot 21, find of the strip of decorated lead, which is on the left, which both match isotopically and are made of material mined from a known Templar mine in southern France. Gary gets multiple other hits in the well, but it is refilled very quickly, so they decide to stop for the day and devise a different plan. In Smith's Cove, the team has uncovered multiple previously discovered and newly discovered wooden structures this season. Rick and Marty get samples of various timbers to be sent to get dendrochronology testing for age. I'll be continuing retro no cap recaps of seasons six through eight during the summer and early fall. All of the other episodes are already done and are in my Oak Island playlist. I'm also doing no cap recaps of the current season of the Secret of Skinwalker Ranch, which has its own playlist, and I'll eventually start doing retro no cap recaps of seasons one through four. I've already started those, in fact. Thank you so much for watching. Please subscribe, like, and comment. Sempre avanti.